Okay, we got the engine back from the machine shop already. I've actually had this back for several days now. So they did the, the five over on the cylinders, cleaned it, put cam bearings in, balanced the pistons and rods, and then polished the crank. So I don't have all the parts for it yet, but what I'm gonna do today is start putting the crank and pistons and rods in there, and then I'll probably just bag it up for now. I also did get a little barbell for it because they did remove the barbell when they cleaned it. So I got a new one of those. Got some plastic gauge so I can check some of the clearances. Got all the rings, so I'm gonna go to 28 on the top and then 30 on the second ring, and should be decent. So let's get started on all this stuff. Did put a little glob of oil on this thing. O-ring side's gonna go out. I'm just gonna push it in like that and be done. Just gonna put a little bit of oil in the cylinders. And I know I mentioned in another video that I had a little scoring in it and the five thousandths overbore took the scoring out perfectly. So I know there was some concern with about that because I bought the pistons before I did the machine work. Uh, so it was kind of just guessing, but based on the, the size and the depth of the scoring, I felt like it was probably going to be enough and it actually worked out perfect. So, so these pistons are five over and those should work fine. So I'm just going to take uh, some oil and I'm just going to lube up the cylinder walls a little bit. Go through and do this on all of them and then I'll flip it over and we can start to put the bearings and the crank and stuff in there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the bearings. I already have the, the center bearing, the thrust bearing in there. So this thrust bearing has this big surface right here that kind of hangs down around the block. The one with the hole is the one that goes on the lube hole on the block. And there's this little tang that sticks out that goes in the groove on the block. So I usually just push them down, try to make sure that they're flush on each side. And then same thing with all the other bearings. You see the tang and then the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and pop each one in there. And then we can slide the crank on top of it. And these are just standard thickness bearings. They said they did balance it with standard bearings and everything was good. They said they checked the clearances and it was good. I didn't ask them what the clearances were. Uh, so I will use the plastic gauge and measure it. So I'm going to put the crank on and I'm going to put the other bearing onto the cap for all of them. Put the crank on, put the caps on with the plastic gauge and then I'll pull them back off and, and see what the, what the tolerances are. I'll put a little bit of the plastic gauge on the crank. All right, so we got the crank in. It does turn over decent by hand. And I've been starting to go through and put the pistons on the rods. And I'm setting all the pistons up on the rods so that this chamfered edge will go against the counterweight on the crank. So the valve reliefs will be up. Chamfered side will go against the crank, counterweight on the crank. This will be upside down, but I'll show you when I get there. These also do have these little double spiral lock rings. They're a little hard to get in there, but uh, once you get it figured out, they go in uh, okay. They're a little challenging still. And then here's what this double spiral ring looks like. So you basically got to get one of the edges in there first and then just kind of work it all the way around. All right, so I'll go ahead and assemble one. I'm going to take one of the little spiral rings and I'm just going to kind of push the bottom of it open. Hold it open with my finger and then get it locked in here. Once one of the ends is locked in, I'm just going to take this small screwdriver, flathead, and push it down all the way around. Just kind of walk it around the groove. And as you walk it around, it'll seat in the groove. So then you actually have to split this apart and pull this up. It catches on this little groove right here. So I'm just going to pull this up in a way like that. So that I can just continue to walk this spring all the way around.
And you'll see this last little section snap in like that. Now you got the whole thing in the groove. I'm gonna throw a little bit of assembly lube inside the, the rod. And I'll put some on the pin. And I'll make sure I got the side with the lock ring over here. And I'll put the rod into the piston. Slide the wrist pin in all the way. And now that that's in all the way, I'll just go through and put the other spiral lock in. And again, same thing, I'll open this side up. All right, so that one is assembled. Drive relief's up. Chamfer side will go against the counterweight. So I'll finish up the last three here and then we can get to the bearings and the rings. All right, now I'm gonna do the oil rings. So we have this little wavy ring right here. I'm just gonna put this in the bottom groove. These are pretty, pretty flexible so they go on pretty easy. I'm gonna take one of the other thin rings, it's gonna go on the bottom, bottom of the little wavy ring. Oh, that one went in the top, so I'll just throw it on the top. I'm gonna flip this over so I can put the gap on the opposite side. Push it in underneath. I'll just bring this all the way around. All right, so now that one's good. Gaps are on the opposite sides. Now I gotta do the top and second rings. So I'm going to flip the block over and we'll gap the rings. All right, so I got the block flipped over and I got all the rings laid out on the table. Top ring, second ring, and then I'm just gonna go one through eight this way. Now I'm gonna fit each top and second ring into the correct hole. And then file fit the rings. I'm going to do 28 on the top, 30 on the second ring. One piston set up with just an old piston ring on it from a different set. I'm going to use this to flip it upside down inside the bore so I can position the ring. Then I can measure the gaps. After I measure, I'll file each one. Once it's the right size, I'll move on and then I'll put them on the pistons. All right, so cylinder one. Take the ring, put it in slightly. All right, so got all of the piston rings filed now. So here's the top ring on number eight. And I decided to use a different piston, just an old one here, I cleaned it up. And I wasn't really having good luck doing it the other way. I was getting really inconsistent readings. So there's the, the 28 thousandths. So there's the 28 on the top ring. And then the second ring. is going to be 30 thousandths. I'll just show you that. So I was getting inconsistent readings using the other piston. That one might be might be crooked. Hold on. Cuz it was tight in there before. So there's the second ring. So there's 30 thousandths. I was getting inconsistent readings and I didn't really think about it until after I did a few pistons that the top of this piston isn't isn't level. Actually has this dome here and then the top of the dome is not level with this section. So I was pushing it in and it was actually turning the ring uh, a little bit crooked in there. So I was getting inconsistent readings. I would measure it would be tight and then I would measure it would be loose and then I measure again and it would be tight. So it took me a few to realize what was happening. Uh, so that's why I switched to the other piston. Uh, and then I rechecked all of them, so they're all good now. But that did happen, so figured I'd share it. All right, so next I'm going to be putting the piston rings on. <clears throat> so the number two second ring has this little dot on it. The dot is supposed to go up because, because this is the oil scraping ring. So you can see this little ridge on the outside. 
there's actually a little ridge on, on there that points downward and that's for scraping the oil off the cylinder wall as the piston comes down. And then top ring is the compression ring. This one doesn't have any markings, so there's not really a special way that that one goes on. So what I'm going to do with the second ring is I'm going to make sure that the dot is facing up and the oil scraping rig oil and the oil scraping ridge is facing down and I'm just going to kind of hold this thing in the second groove and I just do it by hand and kind of peel it apart like this and get it in the in the groove. And then I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and do the same thing with the top ring. Just kind of peel it apart and put it in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the rings are 180 degrees away from each other, the gaps. So there's a gap here, flip it 180, and then there's a top gap here. And then same thing with the oiling rings, we covered that already, but the top gap for the oiling ring is here. And then the other ones on this side. Just making sure the ring end gaps are opposite of each other. Alright, so I'm going to get this piston ready to put in. I did just put it inside the compressor right away. I did make sure the ring gaps are on opposite ends. And I'll take the, the cap off. Alright, so now that I got the bolts loose, I've just been tapping on the inside of it. Just to make a little gap. Because they are held in there by dowels also. You can see after I pull the threads out there is that little dowel sleeve in there that kind of holds it in. So next I'll go ahead and put the bearing in. And I'm just going to make sure that the bearing tang is lined up in the rod. I'm going to do that for the rod and the cap. I'm just going to make sure that the bearing is clean, no dust on it. They did have some cardboard dust on them just from being in the boxes. I'm going to throw some assembly lube on the rod side of the bearing. And I do have the crank journal, basically bottom dead center, straight down. And I can take the piston and the rod, stick it inside here, and with these tapered compressors, just push it in. And then I'm going to grab it on the bottom side with my finger, just keep it center, and then push it all the way down onto the crank. I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over. Now I usually give the Brought a little pull, make sure that it's seated, make sure that the bearing didn't rotate or fall off or anything weird. I'm going to go ahead and put some more lube on this side of the bearing. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's some numbering on this side of the rod. See that side of the cap has numbering, this side doesn't. So I'm just going to make sure that I have the numbers lined up on both sides, on the cap and the rod. And go ahead and tighten everything down. And after that, I can go ahead and torque it. So the 7 and the 8 rod need to be torqued. And these rod bolts need to be torqued to 82 foot pounds. So I'll go ahead and do that right away. I'll just go ahead and turn everything over, make sure everything still turns decent. Make sure nothing hits, make sure there's no tight spots. No problem.